Hey guys, and welcome back to Dew News. I'm your host, King of Dew, and it's a beautiful day here, and it's probably a beautiful day for you as well if you own any Ethereum. Right now, as I record this, we just reached an all-time high. Um, we are pushing 147.67 right now on GDAX. Um, there's a lot of sites reporting 150, but be careful with that, guys. A lot of sites report against the USD Tether which is actually a type of like coin in a way. So uh, make sure you guys are always uh, taking a look at the sites that do not use USD Tether if you want the real value, the real actual price of Ethereum right now. The best place to go, in my opinion, um, is GDAX. Uh, they are a Coinbase exchange. And uh, because they're connected to Coinbase, that is where as you know, most of the money from new people, especially here in North America, are entering the market. And so you can actually see the prices that people are actually paying with a credit card or bank wire. So, exciting times. Crazy. So last night, um, I predicted we'd hit 142 when I woke up in the morning. Uh, we missed it by 12 cents, so that made me feel good. Um, we're right on pace right now to hit that 150 mark during the conference. So, um, but what's crazy is we could hit that in any minute here. Um, you know, the rush is on. Um, you know, everyone I know is starting to ask questions about it. I have uh, people who are starting to notice my channel asking a lot of questions about it, and the money's really flowing in. Now, when the money flows in, it's hard to get in using credit cards. Uh, Coinbase, for example, um, you know, limits how much you can buy. So when you think about it, there's a lot of money that's entered the market that's kind of tied up because of bank wires. Um, I once did a wire using Coinbase and they didn't actually send the money fast enough and it actually took longer than just three to five business days. Sometimes people get their money stuck in transfer for a couple weeks um, and it's super frustrating and your belief system in cryptocurrency goes up because the solution is sitting right in front of us um, to avoid the BS and to get money to where it needs to go faster. So, okay, all that being said, exciting. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, anyone who owns Bitcoin as well. Let me take a peek and see how we're doing on the Bitcoin realm. You guys are at 159 right now as I record this. Congratulations on that as well. Now, keep in mind, guys, that everyone entering the market in most parts of the world have to enter through Bitcoin first. So it's always a leading indicator. You're gonna see Bitcoin go way up in price and maybe maybe Ethereum doesn't do anything. Give it three to five to seven business days and you'll see the trickle effect. You'll, you'll see it happen. Um, that's just the way that this market works. And it's something that you need to be looking at as early indicators of what potentially could happen next. Okay, I promised you guys um, that I'm going to talk about Microsoft Azure platform and the blockchain technologies that are either already available or that are going to be available. So I spent a lot of time researching this. And so the problem that I'm facing right now is that there's actually too much here to talk about. Um, dozens of coins. So I tried to ask myself, what's the best way I can share this with you guys? I know what you want. Let's be real. You just want me to tell you what to put your money into. Um, so I said to myself, well, which ones would I put my money into? And then I made that list and I said, well, these coins are still super important. Just because I wouldn't put my money there doesn't mean that mo news wouldn't break about it uh, during uh, the event next week at Consensus 2017. Um, so um, I, I'm really torn because I just don't, I, I'll be honest, guys, uh, I have a, a full-time job and I have a full-time family. And I'm trying my best to bring it all to you. But in this particular case, there's just so many coins and we have so little time. Um, I'm just going to try to keep it to the ones that I think that um, are the most meaningful um, if news were to break. Okay. Um, so we're going to get right to it. So directly from the Zora platform, um, one that is out there right now is Emmercoin. Um, I like Emmercoin. Um, it's something you should go take a look at and uh, you should research on your own. But Emmercoin is one that is currently live and it's something to be watching. Um, the price on Emmercoin has been going up and up. In fact, 
Um, I actually did an analysis on all the coins here, and I kid you not, guys, in the last week, every single one that's actually um, a part uh, of the Azure platform or going to be has essentially gone up in price over the last week. Um, I was hoping that, you know, I could share it with you guys and you guys can invest and you make a ton of money, but it seems like I should have done this a week ago, um, but I didn't have the idea to do it until about a week ago. So um, maybe next time or the next event that comes up, but that doesn't mean there still isn't money to be made here. Um, Immercoin, I think for the long term is uh, a good, a good uh, potential investment. Do your own homework, I'm not a financial advisor. Next. Um, we've got Syscoin. Now that one I love. I'll leave it at that. Syscoin is fantastic. Um, you'll definitely want to go check that one out. Um, they have a different, they have three programs on Azure right now. They have an API server, a price peg server, and, um, a full node, uh, server, uh, service. So Syscoin is heavily involved with the platform already. Developers can use it right out the gate right now and that is exciting to me you know uh it's real world application and that i think that there, there's value there waves um big fan of waves too uh, especially for the long term um i think that um uh, waves is uh f for where it's positioned and the type of uh technologies that blockchain offers i think that waves is kind of unique and it has its own uh, ecosystem and um, it, it's it's a good solution in and of itself that has value in and of itself um, so I really like waves uh, for the long term um, it's one um, in my portfolio and it's uh, it's uh, not a large piece at all um, because with a lot of these ICOs there's super high risk but also the rewards ridiculous so I'm okay only having a small piece of my portfolio, um, knowing that it could explode one day. Um, so just something to keep in mind uh, if you're looking for portfolio strategies. Someone asked me uh, to kind of go over some portfolio strategies. Also, someone asked me to do some information on um, what do you do once you strike it rich? Um, there are some people who are making a ridiculous amount of money right now in these markets, and they actually need help. Um, you know, I was joking with my friend uh, during a barbecue today, and I said, man, there are just a bunch of really dumb millionaires out there. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, like, um, all, even if you go back to a year ago, a year and a half ago, just like there's dumb money in the market today, um, there's dumb money back then as well. And there are people right now that just are, they're, they're just straight up rich. Um and they didn't grow up with any wealth and they don't have friends who are wealthy and they literally are like i don't know what to do now it's um you know they've they never stopped and dreamed of the life that they currently are living so really interesting that um there there's more to come <laughs> there's going to be a lot of them um and and i hope that if you're one of them or are going to be you seek out uh, financial advice the best you can find All, first things first the very best accountant and then an attorney <laughs> make sure you have those two things available and uh, move forward from there um, get help and invest wisely don't let someone make all the decisions for you make sure you're you, you know you're educating yourself on finances um, hopefully if you have that much money you have the time to um, as you sit on the hammock on the beach so anyhow um, Read some good financial books along the way, as guys. It'll pay off in the long run and maybe the short run. Who knows? Some of you uh, may be millionaires in a year, and that's pretty cool. Um, it, I guess it just depends. Some of you know, every single day uh, Ethereum goes up and up and up. Um, I, I saw a post today about a gentleman saying, "Hey, I today I'm officially a millionaire," and that was really cool. And he shared his portfolio and he t told the story of how he became a millionaire. And he literally said that he he thanked a bunch of trolls online he's like thank you to all the bitcoin trolls who were trolling bitcoin because a year ago i moved out of bitcoin and i diversified i still had bitcoin but i diversified bought a bunch of ethereum and now i'm a millionaire because i bought the ethereum a year ago and um, i thought that that was really fascinating uh story you know the guy was literally giving credit to those people who were bashing bitcoin 
um, but today as you can see that uh, Bitcoin reaching all-time highs and Ethereum um, blasting all-time highs every single week it's a uh, it's pretty interesting it's good times okay back to it here we go um, what do we got next what do we got next just looking through all my notes um, and those are those are in those are the ones that are active right now um, on the blockchain. Those are the ones that I think that are worth talking about. So Emmercoin, Syscoin, and Waves. Those are the three. Those are the three where right now you can log in. You can go to work, ask an IT guy who uses Azure, say, hey, can you log into Azure and you, can you click on blockchain? It's right there on the left side on the main menu and they can click on it. You can actually see these services available to every developer who uses uh, Microsoft um in their day-to-day -day work and to be honest i don't know anyone in it that pretty much doesn't use some type of azure uh solution right now so um really really cool um and those i think um are potentially still undervalued uh it'll be interesting to see when we get more reporting and data to learn about how much they're being used um so pretty cool stuff okay i'm going to shift to what's not on the platform and this is what's exciting, okay? So these things are not on the platform, but there have been publicly uh, acknowledged uh, partnerships between Microsoft and these uh, particular uh, coins, and that means they could be breaking some news. They could be unveiling what they've been working on. You know, I'm kind of hoping that, um, if you guys are into video games, you, you know how like the, you know, entertainment E3, um they'll and you know they'll announce all of the things that are coming out right in the next year i'm hoping at consensus somehow we find out all the things that are coming out on the azure platform that'd be really cool now i know it may not work that way uh, especially with this new technology and stuff and uh this industry isn't as sexy as a video game but um you know i'm hoping that we can learn something about these these other ones because they're really really exciting to me um so here we go. Uh, what's interesting is uh, BitPay. BitPay is one. Uh, it's a pretty much a uh, pretty general cryptocurrency. It's worth looking at. So I'll write that one down and do some research on your on your own. Um, Ripple. Not sure if you guys were aware, but we may be seeing Ripple on the Azure platform at some time. Um, a lot of you have probably made a lot of money on Ripple. A lot of you are uh, maybe have questions about it um, and what I think about Ripple. And um, I think it's okay to have a, have it in your portfolio. Uh, for me, it's a it would be a strictly speculative column. <laughs> it would be it'd be sound investment, uh, okay investment. Uh, you know, uh, not so okay, um, risky, and then speculative. It is all the way on the far uh, side of the opposite spectrum from super risky uh, to super speculative, I guess. So that's what Ripple is to me. Uh, there's not enough transparency. It's pretty much a centralized blockchain. It's, it's a very difficult for, to understand uh, from, from the outside. Um, I also don't understand banking well enough. So like they could tell me that the banks like it, but I don't know what that means. You know, it's like, I like ice cream, uh, but what about the particular flavor of ice cream? Maybe, you know, so I guess that's a good uh, example of what I mean when I say there, I don't really understand, um, you know, sure, banks are signing up, but, uh, you know, what does that really mean? I don't know. How much are they going to use it? Uh, are they going to use it for every single transaction? Or do they just have these one small, you know, little transactions that they that aren't cost effective to do, but they want to do them. And so it's only going to be used on those. You know what I mean? Like it's really hard to identify what Ripple is going to be used for by these banks right now. So it's super speculative. Um, it's, 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 that's just where I'm at with Ripple. But Microsoft Azure, probably the first time you're hearing this, that Microsoft is working with them. So, that, uh, you know, I, I had to dig, I had to dig around to find these things. Um, and that one I was able to find. So that one's interesting. Next one, I love. I love Factum. Yeah, I love Factum. It's definitely in my portfolio. Um, it's one of the more secure investments for the long term. Uh, you're not going to get rich overnight with Factum. Um, what's really neat about Factum is that it literally has uh, uh, a deflationary, not instead of inflation. So essentially, 
um, uh, it burns up over time. Factum disappears forever. So there was a fixed amount of factum created. There's not going to be more. And over time, there's going to be less and less and less. So the more that it's used. So literally, if you hold on to it and you do nothing, I have no idea what it's going to be worth in a year. I have zero predictions on this one. I'll be honest. I don't know what it'll be in 10 years. I don't know what it'll be in 20 years. But what I do know is there will be less coins in one year, in 10 years, in 20 years. Um, so a long hold. You know, I, I, I who knows what that's going to go to. I, I really, really like Factum a lot. I like the people who are putting money into Factum, supporting Factum, and what they're trying to do. It's very, very problem solution uh, business focused. And the, as you guys know, as you watch my channel, that's what I really, really look for is real problem solution equals value, right? Like if it solves a problem and it, and it does something better than other technologies, value. That is awesome. This has amazing value. Do your research yourself, but it has amazing value on top of the fact that there's less coins today than there were yesterday. So you do the math on that and get back to me on what you guys think about Factum. Um, as I go through this, leave comments, guys. Love to hear what you guys think of these different coins. I'm talking about a lot of them today. Um, let's see. There's a uh, BitShares is one uh, to be to take a look at. Um, I couldn't find a lot of information about the partnership or, or any potential um, announcements. So uh, BitShares has been going up. Um, so something to something to take a look at. Um, I do own some BitShares, uh, and it's uh, it's a pretty risky one. But I also feel like it's one of those ones that you know it can. Uh, triple, double, um, and I can see 10 times um, by the end of the year on that one or something like that. Um, again, I've only put what um, I can afford to lose on that one. Um, I don't like to talk specifics about my holdings, but I think it's important that if you guys hear me say something, you understand where I'm at on it um, so that you go with caution. Um, you should always go with caution on any, any of this. This is all ridiculous and new. <laughs> so... But I think you know that by now. If you're watching this channel, you probably know how ridiculous and new this is um, and how early you are to the party. So, Lisk. Lisk. Um, I like Lisk. Uh, I feel like it's one of those coins that they don't know how to tell their story. They don't know how to market themselves. And instead, they're in a room working their tails off. And I think that that's cool. And that's kind of one of the things I look for m most importantly. Now... Uh, there is something to be said about the coins who do know how to make themselves look good because then a ton of money pours in. I mean, we can all look at Dash and you have to contribute some type of uh, value to the fact that they uh, commercialized themselves so well, right? Um, and that's just me from a marketer's perspective. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, but my professional opinion, actually as a professional e-commerce digital marketer so okay so i've got some more got some more here let me uh bust open this one as well Doo -doo -doo -doo. here's a few more okay cash is another one okay cash i'm not in love with it at all i'll be honest um it, it, i would do a lot of research on that one there's a lot of currencies out there. It's tough to pick which one's the best. Um, okay, cash. Uh, from my, what I understand, is um, essentially uh, developers were like frustrated with like. Um, how do I put it? So developers like basically have been pretty dedicated to improving this project. Um, and they've been working through some issues that they've uh, that the users have been having. Um, so essentially, it was supposed to be like this anonymous coin, but they um, and what I mean by that is you know transactions happening anonymously, so you can't trace them back. Um, anyhow, they kind of shelf that stuff to deal more with what like the actual user base wanted. And um, so I don't know. I feel like this coin pivoted 
and I don't know what it is. That's the best way to put it. I don't know what OK is right now, and I don't think they know what they are right now. Um, I do believe they will figure it out eventually, but until then, um, not you know, you got to do your own homework. But help me figure out OK Cash. Help me um, as well. If you learn anything about it, let me know. Uh, um, I just feel like it's so new, and uh, as far as their pivot goes, Bit Swift. I did a lot of research on BitSwift and it's really, really challenging for me, this one in particular. So essentially, uh, BitSwift, guys, um, located out of Canada, and uh, you know, when you go to their site, it's very similar to like a traditional IT service website. Um, it's kind of like uh, a bunch of guys at this company um, understand blockchain and they they see the potential of like bringing blockchain to their customers you know essentially like reselling it and i'm all for that you know there's going to be and guys right dude i can't even try to imagine the market cap if we were to include like it services that will be reselling blockchain technology solutions and installing them and things like that right but they're kind of like the first ones to do it but then they made like a coin and I can't understand why they made a coin. Like, just for fun? Like, it kind of feels that way, to be honest. It kind of feels like you had these group of guys working at this really, really uh, best-in-class IT service solution place. And they created this coin because, you know, uh, they decided to stay late one night and nerd out and make a coin together. I wish I could have been there. I would have had a blast, right? So I'm not, like, faulting them for that. It's just what it comes... That's just the story I get when I try to understand why they would even do it. I guess the best way to put it is this. With Swift, their mission statement is not clear. The roadmap is not clear. The return on investment is not clear. The, the value to be created is not clear. Um, I'm sure that if they were hearing me right now um, or they, they heard me say this, they would have those answers. But they're not making it transparent on their site now. Just saying. So I would hope that if they do hear me, that they go and they work on a plan to commercialize their coin properly um, because it's very difficult to understand what Swift is. Next, Block. I love the Block Net. I've been in that one for a long time and it's going through the roof right now. I love it. And uh, I always have. I sat on that one for a long time. I literally... Guys, when you do... When you do these speculative long-term ones, you have to literally pretend they don't exist. I'm not kidding. Like at the when, once you believe in it enough to put money in at one time, you've got to never take it out. You know, I know a lot of people they'll take their profits out and things like that. That yes, do that right. So if you have a if you had a you know, a Digibyte for example just went through the roof, I don't fault you for taking out your original investment and letting it ride. Yes, do that. But all the time I see people put in, you know, maybe they'll put in $100 into something like Block, and then it does nothing for two months. And they're like, I'm just going to take this money and stick it over here because Block's not doing anything. And, blah, blah, blah. and you know, you just start whining about the coin you don't like when, you know what, if you would have just left it there, you would have $300 today, $400 today, right? Um, ask yourself before you put the money in if you're okay never seeing it again. And if you treat it like such, uh, you'll be okay. So, Vcash. Eh, do your homework. I, I don't really know much about Vcash. Storage. Storage has been all over the place uh, as of late. Going up in value, going down in value, having a coin sale. I covered it recently. I said you should be trading storage right now, not being a part of the sale. Um, if you were able to trade in, like I suggested in my video, if you were able to trade in instead of buy, uh, many of you would have made a lot of money. So uh, hopefully some of you did. Good job. Good job. Proud of you guys. Shadow coin. Okay. 
Shadow Coin is again another coin that tries to make it so your transactions are anonymous so that you know not even the government can figure out what you did so how do I talk about shadow coin um, I guess it's disturbing that Bittrex is removing them from the exchange I see that as a bad sign Bittrex has pretty good relationships I've learned um, as far as they do the right thing a lot of the time you know they recently did the right thing with the Z classic fork to Zen coin right they worked directly with the developers and actually helped the people on Bittrex properly transfer their coins and issue the Zen coins properly I uh, I, I love Bittrex for doing the right thing good job Bittrex you did the right thing. I would like to think that they're doing the right thing by removing Shadow. Now, I don't know why. I do not know why. I do know it has really low volume. But when I started researching this coin so that I could talk about it with you guys, I basically came to the conclusion that this is one that I need to probably... I almost didn't want to even mention it. I probably shouldn't have said it. Because I don't want anyone to put any money into it. And, uh, you know, that might come back to haunt me that I say that, but just be careful out there, guys. I don't have all the answers to Shadow. Maybe you do. Share it in the comments for everyone else. You know, I've got, um, I can't believe how many people watch this channel now, but you're helping a lot of people, not just me. So be a part of the community. Share what you know. Game credits. Uh, game credits have been going through the roof lately. Um... Game credits is going to be on the Azure platform, so that's you know, that's really exciting. Obviously, that connects really, really well to all of the uh, developers developing games and all the Microsoft partnerships. When it comes to video games, Microsoft is shaking hands with pretty much, gosh, I don't know, as far as AAA titles go, more than half of the community. So, uh, if if they want to push blockchain uh onto the video game industry uh this would be the easy way for developers to um buy in you know i've been thinking about i think i was thinking about man how cool is it going to be when there's like this video game ecosystem of game credits and when when the gamers want to see something happen in the game or see something developed uh they can actually raise the money um, together uh, and and give it to the devs to support them in making the game better or making the game uh, longer, maybe adding new levels, expansions, new content, things like that. That's really cool. And if you guys don't know, I used to work in the video game industry. Um, I did some contract work both in college uh, and um, after college uh, at Microsoft. Uh, now, I was not a Microsoft employee. That's not how it works. I was a contractor. Almost everyone that works at Microsoft is pretty much a contractor. <laughs> Feels that way anyways. At least everyone I knew was on contract. And so I got to work on AAA titles, and I also got to work on the hardware side um, for video games. So uh, I see that working well, and that's just a personal opinion. And uh, But I do think we're a ways out from that. You know, I don't think at this E3 they're going to be like, oh, game credits. No, you're, you know, maybe in three years, um, you know, all the developers will get exposed to game credits and maybe they build out this economy that, you know, maybe they use essentially game credits for Xbox Live. What if I got paid for playing a game? What if I got paid for trying a demo? That's strong marketing. That already, guys, is stronger marketing tactics than basic attention token is offering right out the gate. Xbox Live has the user base, right? They have developers who are making games, and they want people to play the game. And if I'm a marketer on, on that game, I have no problem paying you, the gamer, to try it out. Because I believe in my game so much that if you just try it, you'll buy it. So sure, have a game credit, 
right now that's worth three bucks i'd love a game credit i'd go try any demo right now for three bucks in game in game credits all right sign me up and then what i can then use those game credits on the xbox live marketplace you see where this is going guys so it just makes perfect sense um for something like game credits to get implemented into the ecosystem now with that said there are other currencies can microsoft make their own xbox live coin hello that'd be sweet but think about it just think about it uh, do your own research but game credits is pretty cool uh people use it to bet and stuff too uh i'm not i'm not really into that betting on esports i love esports guys dota 2 fans out there hit me up give me thumbs up but um love esports i'll see you at the international um i'll be there again this year but game credits do your homework figure that one out if it makes sense for you uh make it happen blitz blitzcoin blitzcoin is kind of uh interesting um there's 10 percent interest on people who stake the coin so there are some people who are staking it i have trouble identifying the value in blitz so if you have any information on blitz feel free to share it uh essentially on the surface i can't really see any additional value it's a, it's pretty much a generic cryptocurrency with a dis you know it's I don't know. It just feels like every other cryptocurrency out there, and so for me, that's kind of a problem. I, I'm, I'm not seeing the unique selling proposition that it offers. So, uh, that's Blitz. I don't think there's much there, and I think you'll agree if you look it up. Jumbucks. Um, this one's interesting. It's a newer one. Um, and it's kind of an experimental kind of coin. At least that's where it came from in the beginning. It was meant to be experimental. And then it kind of just got a life of its own. So it is kind of cool because it's like very organic in nature. That, you know, it was kind of experiment. And, you know, then we tried this and that. And then, oh, okay. So I don't know about Jumb Bucks. Um, I do know I really don't like the name. It just sounds dumb. But with a J. <laughs> Jumb Bucks. I don't know. Uh, it's not very appealing. I think that if they rebranded themselves and, um, you know, took it seriously, uh, I do think it could go up in value because uh, I think there is something to be said about uh, that organic effect of, of people uh, contributing uh, from the ground up with passion and not just with money. So pretty cool. All right. So I've got more. There's more, guys so many coins microsoft azure guys maybe consider do your own homework but be looking maybe to uh buy in on microsoft stock i don't know just saying i'm super impressed with both ibm and microsoft be being very open and public about the plays they're trying to make in the blockchain space i think that they are thinking way ahead um and not thinking about today anymore the new leadership that's in place is not the leadership that has been there for the last uh 10 or 15 years and uh they're doing the right things as far as um they're they're looking at the future internet and investing in it um now i understand that there's definitely people watching this channel right now that don't like this at all they don't like the ibm they don't like the microsoft getting involved because that's centralized Okay, um, and that's not what they want. You know, they don't want. You know, Microsoft's going to be making money off this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yes, that's true. That's very true. Um, but we kind of have to accept it as is. You know, uh, capitalism isn't going to disappear because of uh, blockchain, right? Um, in fact, look at Ripple. You want an example of greed and. Uh, <laughs> um, potentially market manipulation um you know go look at the banks and uh you see ripple there being really really highly valued by everyone right now because it's you know very likely that it will get centralized and the banks will own it um it's very real i mean there's no way around it there's going to be centralized blockchain solutions we need to accept it 
Um, but with all that said, really this is just a platform to access it easier, uh, for it to plug and play a little bit better. Um, you know, there's a lot of programmers out there that just don't get it, they don't understand it, it doesn't make sense. So just keep that in mind. Now this is really, really interesting. So I got on GitHub to look at Azure blockchain projects, and you can look at this yourself. Um, now what's really, really interesting about it is there were a lot of coins on here that I found zero information about. The other thing that was slightly confusing to me, as someone who doesn't use GitHub a lot, is essentially that they have all these projects, and a lot of them haven't been touched in a long time. But I did want to just go ahead and make them aware um, to you guys so that you could write them down and keep them uh, keep them you know front and center on your mind that these potentially could be announced or revealed to be added to the Azure platform maybe they announce a new partnership officially um, and you know maybe it's not even at consensus you know I'm giving you guys all this information consensus is potentially it's it has potential that's it there could be be some new news there might be nothing um, in this space in the cryptocurrency space there's news every day and it's gonna it's gonna be good for you if you know in advance what the news means like you don't have to go do the research on is this good news or bad news is that a good thing is it good that they're on Azure right hopefully you do the homework in advance so I just wanted to list these coins off to you that I saw in GitHub and you guys can just write them down and uh, just consider them for yourself. So uh, I saw Dubai coin, um, game units is one I haven't mentioned yet. Monero is one that I didn't mention. Um, Next, I really like Next. Do, go do research on Next. Consider Next in your portfolios. Um, Again, I'm not a financial advisor, but do your homework. Um, open chain. Um, Stratus is the one that jumped off the page for me. And one other one that did was Expanse. Okay. Now, um, I like Expanse. Uh, I really like Stratus, though. very very cool so that would be huge news um, it would be exciting to see Stratus available on the Azure blockchain uh, you know and why is that really important okay so now that we're kind of done I've listed all of those off um, I want to talk about what this really means well essentially it's such it, it, it's a lot of exposure but what it really means at the end of the day, no matter how, how you look at it, is more transactions happening in the blockchain universe um, with the way that the majority of the chains and the majority of the technologies work. Um, it essentially is going to increase the value. And that's it. That's why it's exciting. You know? Um, the first technologies to get out there on these type of platforms and be easily accessible it's easily digestible right those are going to win okay so you know I talk about NEM a lot their entire blockchain is focused on what I'm just talking about right now it is a blockchain solution that's supposed to be as easy as possible to start using it's written in common languages that programmers already know, whereas Ethereum requires you to go learn how to do, you know, you have to go learn how to do smart contracts using Solidity, um, and so it's just you have to learn a new language. It's similar to some other languages, but you still have to learn a new one. Um, but NIM, you don't have to, and so um, and that's why there's more and more transactions starting to happen on NIM because there's a lot of developers that they have to make a long-term decision, right? So let's put, let's be in their shoes right now, okay? Let's all be um, CTOs for a moment. And you have made the decision that uh, we need to implement blockchain technology into our company because in the next 10, 20, 
and 30 years, it's going to be critical that we uh, understand it and have the systems in house to support it, as long as the talent. And that's the critical piece is um, a year and a half ago, if you knew how to program in Solidity, you are now a multimillionaire. It's over. That's end of story. You are. Um, basically, because of that, there aren't very many people who know the language that are not multimillionaires. And there are, there's a bunch coming. They're training, but there's no one proficient. Now, let's say that a year from now, two years from now, there are some proficient programmers. You as the CTO have to ask yourself, how much would that person cost? It's going to cost a lot. There's not that many of them. You are absolutely going to have to relocate them if you want them in the office. Because Lord knows corporate America and most corporations around the world still require people to go to work every day, even though no one talks to each other. <laughs> Most of the time. Right? Right? Very high price. Nim, on the other hand, there's so many programmers out there that speak, that work and develop in these languages that um, you can find them in your hometown. Piece of cake. No relocation fees. It's going to be affordable because there's more supply. Um, and that's that's it. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope that made sense. So that's how come I'm a big believer in NIM. I am a bigger believer in Ethereum. I do believe that Ethereum is the, the future of the internet. Um, it ha it's it's going to change the world. But, you know, NIM is like potentially the next Microsoft, maybe the next Google. But no one would ever know who they are for a long time, right? It's like those companies you hear about and you're like, I've never heard of that company. Oh yeah, they're they're like a hundred billion dollar company. Huh? How come I've never heard of them? <laughs> I feel like Nim could be that someday. So um, it just makes sense. So right now Nim has the edge. In a few years, when there's more people programming and Solidity, maybe it's not such a big deal. But right now, if you're taking anything really seriously, you need Nim. Backtrack that to what we're talking about: Azure platform. Azure makes it easy for developers to start using these blockchain technologies. And that's all that matters, guys. We need people using it more. These platform, these these blockchains being offered on platforms like Azure is critical elements for success in the short term and the long term for the entire ecosystem of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Doesn't matter what you believe in or what you want to happen, but that's the reality of the situation is there's nothing that we're going to be able to do to stop it. The only people who can stop it will be the people um, that are basically governing the blockchain, that are making the decisions to connect them or not. But here's the thing. The block, the blockchains in and of themselves are decentralized in a way where there they're many times is not a governance so um, think about that, like almost any company should be able to add it to their marketplace. That would be fair. That would be decentralized, right? So as long as there's not a monopoly effect, right? As long as one of these chains isn't trying to do a deal or trying to, you know, work with Microsoft in some, you know, secret way to monopolize it, then we're good. We're good. It's still decentralized. It's still going to be available. Um, you don't have to use Microsoft Azure. You don't have to work with IBM. You can you can work with anyone you want. Um, you can go direct to the chain if you want to and develop on it. So, anyhow, guys, I hope you learned something. I tried my best. There's so many coins. Um, I tried to talk about the ones that I felt like that mattered, um, at least today. You know, someone will watch this video in a year and probably giggle, right? Um, but that's also fun and exciting. I love this new technology in this space. Something new is happening every day. There's always breaking news about something exciting. And that's what I'm here for, guys. 
I am here to try to bring you that news. If you like this content, if you like the news that I bring, please give me a thumbs up and follow the channel so you don't miss out on any any news. Um, I often do some breaking news as well, and sometimes I'm the first to bring it, um, only because I'm lucky and I happen to be at my computer when it breaks, but I try my best to do that uh, for you guys. Um, it's pretty much my full-time hobby uh, is blockchain and cryptocurrency research, investing, um, and uh, yeah, I love it. Um, I'm also really excited because I'm getting to know you guys. Leave a comment below. I always respond to my comments. I try to answer any questions if I can. Um, I have a huge list of stuff you guys have requested, and I'm going to be bringing you that stuff through my videos um, and teaching you guys what you want to know. Um, and, and oftentimes, I don't know. I won't lie, guys. And then I go figure it out. But it's fun for me. Let me be. Let me go do your homework for you, <laughs> okay? Because it's fun. Um, and uh, and it's exciting and uh, there's a, there's enough room in the industry for all of us and uh, we're all in this together as a community and it's a lot of fun so I appreciate you guys so much um, also I'm on steam it if you don't know what steam it is it is an awesome uh, cryptocurrency uh, steam it is in beta still so you can get in real early it's got everything guys it's got awesome ways to uh, earn more cryptocurrency called steam uh, you can earn steam by posting you can earn steam by leaving uh, comments um, and you can earn steam by just having steam um, by staking it and uh, you don't even need that much to get started like a hundred dollars you could start staking and actually earn earn uh, steam they take 15 percent of everything that's created and distribute it based on how much you have so uh, you you can start staking with just a hundred bucks if you wanted to which is pretty cool um, most you know they've been doing staking for a long time they were one of the first and uh, they were doing it before it was called staking there wasn't like a industry term for it like there is now and if you don't know what staking is essentially it's when you um, commit to buying a certain amount and you're like I now have a certain amount so for like them you need at least 10,000 coins of NIM to begin staking, and you put it on a node, um, and essentially that node is doing transactional confirmations, etc. All that being said, Steam, you don't have to really do all that. It's just, you just have to own some, which is really cool, And but it's still staking, because it's like it's like you're staking your, your ground, you know, um, and uh, you're committing to the chain. So, so since you've committed... You, you have shown that it has high value and you support it and you support it financially in a way and thus you should be rewarded for that, right? That makes sense. So uh, yeah, 15% of the coins that are basically generated are distributed and I kid you not guys, if I go to my Steam it right now and hit refresh, I will literally have more Steam than the last time I was on there. It's simple. It just keeps going up and it's like in real time. A lot of other staking, it's very random. You don't know when you're going to get it. So I think Steam is really cool. All that being said, tangent about Steam. It. I love Steam. It. Can you tell? Uh, go down in my description and go and follow me on Steam. It. If you don't have an account, if you create an account, um, I believe they still are doing the promotion where you're going to get free Steam. It. I'm not sure on that. Um, I don't get anything for you signing up. Um, the only thing that I can get anything from is if you upvote me on Steam. It. Um, then that's awesome. That's you. Le you're literally donating me money. I don't know if you understand that concept, but on Steam it, if you just give me a thumbs up like you would on Reddit or you would on Facebook, I actually make money. And so if you don't have money to share, uh, but you want to support me and the channel, that's the best place to do it. Because as my reputation grows on Steam it, more and more people see my see my post. I have more uh, prestige on that platform, and people are seeing my content, and more and more people are coming. And uh, it's really cool. So I like Steam it a lot. I like the concept. Um, I'm a pretty big believer in it, and I think you should check it out. So anyhow, that's it, guys. That's it. I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you. Have a good night.